Hi everyone, Andrew here from the Time Series Insights Program Management Team. In this video, I am going to create a Azure IoT Solution Accelerator that will enable me to start to build a real IoT solution that I can scale. Hi everyone, Andrew here from the Time Series Insights Program Management Team. In this video, I am going to create a solution accelerator that will enable me to build a Hi everyone, Andrew here from the Azure IoT Hi everyone, Andrew here from the Time Series Insights program management team. In this video, I am going to create an Azure IoT solution accelerator that I am going to use to build a real IoT solution. Now, Azure IoT Solution Accelerators are really cool ways to start from nothing and very, very quickly have a full cloud solution that can generate data, that can generate data that you can easily start to plug your own devices into, your own gateways, uh, to, to actually go from what is a proof of concept generating simulated data to a real full-blown IoT solution that you can use in a production environment. So in this case, um, I have gone ahead and created a... Uh... Now, for today, I've already created one. They take a, about five minutes to, to go from uh, provisioning to being ready to go. Um, but you should feel free to choose a remote monitoring one, a connected factory one, a predictive maintenance one, uh, or even the device simulation that I'm gonna use today to start your own IoT solution. Um, and what we'll do from there is we'll connect Time Series Insights, uh, a Time Series Insights environment to that solution. And we'll start generating data and we'll go from there. Now, because, now these solutions work incredibly quickly, stitching together multiple services to build a full-blown cloud solution. Uh, they typically take about five minutes to provision. So I have gone ahead and created one to make this a little bit more smooth. So I'm going to click on my solution accelerators. However, you should feel empowered to choose any of these, uh, depending on your use case and scenario uh, that fit your needs. Now, I've chosen to use the device simulation uh, solution accelerator, which is a really phenomenal tool to generate lots of data very quickly um, which, as we all know, is uh, is pretty typical of the Internet of Things. So I'm going to launch this device simulation solution accelerator, and I will go in and provision it from there. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and set up the simulation. Now, I'm going to use a pre-provisioned IoT hub. Uh, I'm going to select connected chillers. I'm going to build a thousand devices. And I am going to go with the default of letting them send telemetry in 10 seconds, and I will run the simulation indefinitely. Now, once I started this simulation, uh, I can now go to IoT Hub, and I can go to the Azure IoT portal, or to the Azure portal. Now, once I started this simulation, I can scoot over to the Azure portal, where I can now uh, connect this IoT Hub that was provisioned um, as a component of the simulation to a Time Series Insights environment that I'm going to go ahead and create. So we'll start with the IoT Hub. Now, the first thing that is important to do for any... Now, the first thing that's important to do for any... And here we are. I've got the IoT Hub that was just created for me as a component of this Solution Accelerator. It's already started to generate uh, data. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scroll down to Endpoints. Now, with Endpoints, I can create a custom consumer group just for Time Series Insights. Um, now, I could just use the default, but um, it's a good best practice to create a consumer group that is designated just for Time Series Insights so we don't have any uh, data that's read 
that you might want to also be read by another service. Um, so I will create that and we'll hit save. You'll also notice that I've got a retention time here of one day. Um, if I wanted to increase that, uh, I certainly could. Um, this is where I would go if I had some historical data in this IoT hub that I didn't necessarily want to use in the connection to Time Series Insights. Um, I could uh, leave this at one day. If I wanted to save some of the historical data, I could scale this up to up to seven days. I'm not going to do that though for this case. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to create a Time Series Insights environment. So um, I will notice, I will just take note of this particular uh, uh, IoT hub. I am going to create a resource. I'm going to go to Internet of Things, Time Series Insights. I'm going to go ahead and label this TSI device sim one. I'm going to use an existing resource group. I will uh, leave this as an S1. If I will, if I thought I was going to be sending a lot of data here, and kind of when I get to production, uh, I might start with an S2. So um, typically, if I'm going to, if I want to store more than 300 million total events or approximately um, 300 gigabytes worth of data, I would start with an S2 and scale up from there. I'll pin that to dashboard. I will click create. And now if I already had reference data associated with these devices, uh, the best practice would be to go ahead and as soon as this new environment is created, uh, it would make the most sense to uh, go ahead and upload that reference data sets of time series insights. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to use data that's that's being pushed from this IoT hub as a component of the solution accelerator to build out a reference data set that's custom for this data. And the suggestion here for, for any user would be to try to make this data uh, as close to what your environment um, uh, as, as possible. So while I have it labeled as chillers, if you made something else or if your devices don't look at all like chillers, reference it is a great way to contextualize this solution accelerator uh, and specifically the simulation to provide a look and feel that, that resonates with, with you, which should help make um, this simulation start to feel like a reality. So I've got the simulation or I've got my time series insights environment. I click on event sources. I'm going to add an event source. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say TSI device sim. This is an IoT hub. Uh, and then I'm just going to go look for this particular IoT hub. Now I know it is um, it is this one just because I, uh, I just saw it a second ago. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to make sure that I, I select the consumer group I made for Time Series Insights. So you'll notice uh, TSI consumer I made when I provisioned the IoT Hub just a moment ago. I'm going to label that. Um, and, and now I'm going to leave this blank, this timestamp property name. But if I knew what this was already, it's a good idea for me to put this in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click Create. And within the next 30 seconds or so, we should start to see events flowing into uh, time series insights from that IoT hub. Now, a good way to validate this is to go to metrics, click on ingress receive bytes, and you'll notice that I can actually see <clears throat> that I've got data flowing in. But you'll notice that um, the data has been flowing in from about 30 seconds after I uh, connect to that event source. Um, I can alternatively go to the overview and in monitoring, I can see that I've got data flowing in. So now what I'll do is I will actually click on the Time Series Insights Explorer URL, which will take me to Time Series Insights. I'll be logged in already. And from here, I'm actually able to go and start seeing the simulated data uh, up on my screen uh, where I can go and I can start to query it. And what's really exciting is that in a relatively short period of time, less than 15 minutes, I've gone from no solution, no data, to a solution that I can actually scale into something that I could put into production if I want to. I've got data I can start to explore. I'm saving that data. 
Um, and I've, I've got a user experience that enables me to do some really, really exciting stuff to dig into this data.